Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this music, and we stop it really quick because we're afraid of getting sued, and then you hear this music, we're not quite so worried about getting sued because that's the coming attractions soundtrack from uh, movie theaters when we were kids. Um, we have, you know, it's an episode of New Bopalula. It's the really, especially half-assed episode. New Bopalula slash Coming Attractions. I added Coming Attractions because I realized that I didn't have enough new books. So I, I thought I'd talk about some new books that I'm working on that I'm going to be doing pieces on in the next few weeks. So they're coming out in a few weeks along with some new books. But I didn't have that many stuff here. So I, I kind of added a bunch of different stuff. Okay, so um, let me see what have we got. I'll just go through the top here. Um, this is, I'm, I'm working on a small piece about Oscar Wilde. And I haven't read this yet. Most of these books, I haven't read it, most of these books, right? That's the premise of New Bob Lula. I just got the books. The Invention of Oscar Wilde, Nicholas Frankel, from, I believe it's University of Chicago Press. Well, this may be, that's the British, that's the British edition from Reaction Books. And it's an academic, academic-ish book about the sort of Wilde's presentation, how he created this persona of himself, which was sort of probably the most brilliant creation. He was a really, really funny guy. And said a lot of funny things. So uh, that's all I have to say about that book. This looks really good too. I'm not. I'm not going to do a piece on this. I don't believe. I would like to have written about. I've always wanted to write more about H. G. Wells. This Claire Tomlin's a good, a very good. Uh, that's Dodo over there. Dodo, you want to come and say hi? This is the mutual of Omaha of literary chat shows. There she goes. And I'm the Marlon Perkins of literature. This is Claire Tomlin. She's a very good biographer. She's written a lot of. Interesting biographies about Dickens and Samuel Pepys or Pips or whatever the hell it is. And she's got a book just about H.G. Wells' early years. And it's up to 40. And if you really look at the, just look at the number of great, amazing books Wells wrote. He was a really, ama he's got to go in the All Bathtub Hall of Fame eventually. And I was hoping to do some more, re go back and reread and read. There's a lot of his books I haven't read. Um, anyway, this is coming out in November. November. So you can put that on your Christmas list. Um, and uh, I, I think that's worth checking out. This is from England. It'll, that means it'll come out in America eventually. It just came out in the UK. It's called Death Threats and Other Stories by our, one of our favorites here. I'm sure there's lots of people just sick to death of hearing me talk about Simenon. Grandma, you don't need to come in. He's just talking about Simenon again. Just stay with the kids. You don't need to come listen to him. Um, that's what that's what someone would be saying to their grandmother. This is called Death Threats. It's a bunch of short stories, mostly uh, Simenon short stories. Simenon, mostly May Gray short stories. Simenon wrote a lot of short stories, and I used to have two volumes of hardcovers of his old May Gray short stories. He wrote quite a few. This supposedly has three stories never before published in English, and it doesn't have all of the stories. I mean, I had this and May Gray's Christmas. May Gray's Christmas is another from Penguin from a few years back. That has a lot of May Gray short stories. And they're really good. He, May Gray just, you know, he travels well. He's, he's wonderful. I love May Gray. Um, and I like some of the short stories as much as I like his uh, May Gray novels. This is two things. We're going to talk more about this in the next couple of weeks because I've been reading a lot of, reading and rereading a lot of Stanislaw Lem. He's one of our favorites here at the bathtub. We've talked about it. And I've got a piece coming out about Lem soon. And I will uh, talk more about him when we when we get there. But these are two brand new books from MIT Press, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They're bringing out. They're trying. They seem to be on a project of republishing or newly publishing all of Lem's books. And we talked about this in the past. There's a lot of problems with the the Lem translation uh, in, in English over the years. This is one of the most important books in the MIT Press published without seeming to know it, which was the first proper Polish to English translation of the, the Invincible, one of his best books. And this, this month, they're publishing a couple of weird ones. One is called Dialogues. And Stanislaw Lem wrote this in the 50s. It's based on uh, cybernetic theory and it's kind of a series of dialogues between, you know, it's Holmes and Watson, right? One guy knows everything and the other guy doesn't know anything. And they talk about computers and whether computers can have intelligence and whether inanimate, you can have souls and inanimate objects, blah, blah. Anyway, it's pretty interesting. I, I found it a little hard going and it was a little dry and it was kind of working out a lot of ideas discussed in the 50s. But it's, you know, it's an important book in, this, in the LEM 
canon. I, I would I would save this for like you know after you've read all his great novels. Um, and then this is more interesting. This is a book of his stories that have not been translated into English, The Truth, and other stories, with a, with the best introduction in the whole series by Kim Stanley Robinson, who clearly really knows all of Lim's work and likes it, and he has a really useful introduction to the, to to Lim's work. And I enjoyed this. It's not my favorite, still not my favorite Lim stuff. It's a little more of his kind of serious, more serious science fiction like Solaris or The Invincible. And I tend to really like his wacky comic, Crazy Robots. Um, and and uh, this, this only has like one story like that. But it's a big, important book. It's in hardcover. Again, it's, it's pretty expensive, 40 bucks, but it's worth checking out. Here's one. I don't even remember if we talked about this. I'm pretty sure this is out now. August 3rd was the pub date. So this is already out. This is one of our favorites here at the bathtub, Brian Evanson. Um, we love Brian Evanson's stories. They are so weird and so dark. And they're kind of hilarious in a really horrifying way. And it's kind of the new horror stuff. You, if you like Thomas Ligotti, you definitely have to try out Brian Evanson. And I haven't read this book, but I have not read a book of stories by Brian Evanson that didn't kind of knock me out. They're just always, and they're all, each story is kind of genuinely kind of horrific um, and kind of funny. Here's some cool books. Again, I'm not going to be able to do these either, so I'm going to talk about them. This is just coming out. I wanted to do a piece on Bradbury, and I, maybe eventually I will. This is the, our, friend, our friends of the Library of America. We all love Library of America. It's just hard kind of turning the pages because they're so thin. They're, like, they're just so thin. It's hard to turn, find, the next, find the next page to turn. But Ray Bradbury, we love Ray Bradbury. He's one of our big heroes here at the bathtub. He's, we, we gave him the All Bathtub Hall of Fame Award, which, which I understand he was greatly moved. He was, he was deeply affected by this. And uh, if this is five, probably five of his best books. You know, Martian Chronicles, Fahrenheit 451, Dandelion Wine, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Okay, four of his best books. And uh, I mean, there's plenty of room for more Bradbury to come out. But that's a good start. It's a lovely copy. And uh, I don't know, I'm going to give it to a cousin, one of my nephews or nieces or somebody, because that's such a beautiful book. I don't, I don't think I, I can't keep it because I have all these books. But that's a book you might want to give somebody for Christmas. I do, uh, I don't see how they could, a kid, particularly a kid or any grown adult, any age can enjoy all those books. Here's another one from Library of America. And I'm debating whether I'm going to read this or not. Oh, Henry. Oh, Henry's one of those guys you had to read in high school because, you know, the, remember the gift of the Magi? This, some guy gives his wife a hair co a comb and she gives him, a, I don't know, a gold tooth or something. I, I, I'm, I, I guess oh Henry's okay. I don't know. I've never really read him. He was always taught to me as, you know, he wrote great surprise endings. And I kind of hate surprise endings usually in stories. So um, um, I don't know. I'm kind of debating reading it because looking through it, he sounds like a kind of an interesting, he had a really interesting life. He spent a lot of time in jail and and uh, had a really interesting career. So I don't know, I'm kind of debating reading that one. Here's one, this is sort of coming attractions too. This is the second volume of the Joan Didion Library of, uh, of America. We talked about the first volume a year or two ago. I did a piece at the uh, Los Angeles Review of Books about the first volume. That sort of has most of my favorite Didion in it. It has, um, it has played as it lays, which I still think is her best novel, and has all of her early essays and some really, really wonderful writing. I, I just reviewed this. I'll put a, a link to it tomorrow because it's coming out tomorrow in the Los Angeles Review of Books. I I never liked these books when they came out. Her her third and fourth novels, Democracy and the Last Thing He Wanted. Her book on Salvador, I think, is I just really hate that book. And so I'm giving, I, we don't like to say bad things here at the bathtub, but I, I'm sorry, I just didn't like any of these books. And I wrote a long essay about why I didn't like these, which has probably got its own problems, but uh, I did my best. I really didn't like this book. Um, I, I would say the essays from uh, After Henry, that's like the best part. The After Henry essays, there's a lot of good stuff in that, but uh, most of it I could live without. And finally, I think this is it. We've got the, this is sort of a coming attraction, sort of a new book. This is the latest volume in the R.A. Lafferty Collected Short Fiction, Volume 6. Is that, I mean, are these like the most beautiful books you've ever seen? Centipede Press is doing one of these like a year, every year. These are just beautifully hand-sewn, beautifully designed. Just the typography, just the, the settings. They do really lovely work. And they're doing the collected fiction. They're really laid out in an interesting way. I've just written an introduction for the next volume, and uh, so I've been keeping up with all of these. 
And this has got this one has particular slow Tuesday night, which is one of the funniest Lafferty stories I can remember. And then a lot of uh, stuff I had. What's the name of that town? I remember that one. And I reread some of these recently. This has a really interesting introduction by Neil Gaiman. A lot of people are fans of Neil Gaiman. And uh, this his introduction is kind of fun because he knew when he was a kid he sort of corresponded with Lafferty. And there's a, the kind of an int most interesting introduction I've read in this series because it has lots of private correspondence between uh, Lafferty and, and Gaiman and some uh, Gaiman gave him some questions and got some questions and answers out of him. And uh, it's interesting hearing Lafferty talk about himself fairly sober because I guess he was not sober a lot of the time. Anyway, that's a great series. It's very hard to get. They're kind of expensive, but I would certainly recommend them. And I guess that's it. That's New Bapalula and, uh, and sort of a coming attractions. I'll put a link to my piece on Didion and we'll do more about Lem and uh, Lafferty in the future. Okay, uh, happy bathing. Uh, stay out of trouble.